modular ruins for Frostgrave on today's episode. Stick around. What up, YouTube? Welcome back. I am your friendly neighborhood dungeon master. And this last week on the channel, I hosted my second live stream where I crafted a whole bunch of terrain pieces um, that sadly did not get finished. And I'm going to try to finish some of them this week in this video. Now, um, I had made, uh, started work on a Frostgrave terrain board. I am currently waiting for the arrival of some uh, textured rollers to finish those and I'm kind of stalled on making those until I get the texture rollers and I was thinking of making my own but I can't logistically figure out a way to make the negative mold using I was going to use my Hearst Arts uh, wall pieces to make a negative mold of cobblestone and it just became way too much of a hassle so I'm going to figure out uh, something else to do this week so what I was going to do is take these modular ruins that we did also on the stream this weekend and finish these up, get these painted up and get these tabletop ready for you this week. So this will be a short video and I'm gonna include a clip this week. Uh, we f I finally got around to showing you guys how I make my textured uh, terrain paste. So we're gonna go through that as well. Um, so it was stick around, I'm gonna do a little bit of painting and uh, get some of these things a little bit more ready for the tabletop. First, a recap of some of the stuff that we did on the stream. Um, I'm using some foam core here to do the bases. Now, I don't usually use this. I use um, MDF typically, but or I haven't used this in a very long time since I started using MDF. But I figured that this would be a lot easier to do for the stream than to cut up some MDF. Uh, so that's what I went with. And I wanted to use uh, some of the Hearst Arts pieces that I had spent the week casting while making some of the rock molds that went into the, the scenery. So I decided to build the, a small uh, ruined building using some of those pieces as well as some walls. For this piece, um, I just decided to cast a, a small uh, impression that I had taken of a, a rock from my backyard. Um, if you check out the replay of the stream, you can see uh, the, the greater detail of how I use those castings. Um, and here I wanted to use some more of my uh, homemade texture paste, which uh, I'll show you at the uh, towards the end of the video how I did. I wanted to show you guys briefly how I make my texture paste. Um, this is the same recipe is fairly simple, and um, this version of it came out a little bit different than how the last batch that I made, but it's going to work just as fine. Um, I start with some drywall uh, joint compound or filler, as they um, as they call it, some places, and some dirt, um, just regular old grit from my backyard, and just mix that together to thicken up the uh, joint compound a little bit. And I, added, I ended up adding quite a bit of that grit uh, to make it thicker. I'm looking for something that's more of a paste than a uh, cream. Unfortunately, I had added a little bit too much PVA glue here. So you, you could have stopped well before. Yeah, I, I put way too much. Just, just too much. Uh, use a lot less PVA glue than I did here. Uh, but PVA glue is the next ingredient. And you want to mix that up too. And if it gets too wet like I have it here, just keep adding more grit. Um, 
and then I colored it. You this is this step's optional. You don't have to add color to it, but I since I paint a lot of my stuff anyway afterwards, this helps hide some of the um, the crimes that end up underneath uh, what goes on when you when you put the stuff on the bases. Sometimes you miss a spot when you paint or something like that, and sometimes the stuff you put on top rubs off. This helps prevent that. And mixing in a little bit of black with the brown helps give it a little bit more of an earthy color. Uh, I almost forgot to add the most important ingredient to it, which was um, drywall spackle. Now this is a little bit different than the joint compound, but it provides a kind of uh, fluffy airiness to it that makes it it has more of a consistency of soil. If you want to skip the drywall joint compound and use the spackle, um, be my guest. I think that that might even work a little bit better for this recipe. But that's it. That's the gist of my um, texture mud that I make to use on almost all of my bases. You can see here the final consistency is something like a brownie batter. That's a little too thin, but you can thicken it up, like I said, by adding some more grit. So normally I wouldn't use any more uh, foam board to do my terrain basing. Um, I used it for the stream for the purposes of getting stuff done quickly on the stream because I didn't want to waste people's time sitting around waiting for glue to dry and whatnot. Um, so what I have here is some uh, warpage on the underside, which we anticipated in the stream. I said that that might happen. So the first thing that I need to do is correct the warpage. To do that, I'm going to use some Mod Podge. Um, I'm going to do that for the underside. I'm going to also coat the tops of these with the Mod Podge when it's dry to help seal it. Some of this uh, texture paste didn't quite dry as uh, hard as I would have liked it to. In fact, actually this new batch that I made on the stream is harder than the old stuff that I made. And uh, I think it, this new, newer stuff actually worked out better. I also ended up putting it on the edges here on this one, whereas on these I didn't. So I'm gonna need to correct that with some paint as well. So let's get some Mod Podge on the bottoms of these to straighten them out. And then we'll go from there and finish painting these up and getting them set and ready for the table. This large uh, stone piece didn't need much correction, so I didn't need to paint the underside of it too much. I am doing a second coat just to cover up my brush strokes here. Um, the one that I'm having the most trouble with is uh, this one here. That's got the least amount of stuff on it because the foam core itself is just, it's warped. I may scrap that one I don't, if it doesn't correct itself by the time it dries. I am using my blow dryer to kind of try to speed things up a little bit, but I don't know if that's having an impact on the way that the glue sticks to itself and forms that undercoating. I haven't had much trouble with it in the past, so I'm assuming this is going to work just fine, but um, I don't, I can't tell you one way or the other whether leaving it to dry on its own or using the hair dryer is going to affect how the base uh, flexes back in the other direction and this one does not have much of a flex to it at all but I'd rather have the bottom protected than not at all this is one another one of the reasons that I really like to use MDF because I don't have to worry about this uh, this flexibility of the underbase though with the warping at least I haven't yet I have heard of some people having trouble with warping MDF thankfully that has not been my experience but you never know, so I, I'm, I'm going to keep my eyes open for it. In the meantime, we're going to proceed with doing things how we usually do.
Well, I was uh, turning the piece around and trying to, uh, you know, paint the bottom, dry it up a little bit, clean up some of the drip that came over the edge. Uh, I broke off one of the chunks of wall here, so I have to go back in and glue this piece back on. It fell off and I had never really had that happen to me before with the her start stuff and the plaster didn't come separated it actually came attached from the glue and I never usually have that problem with white PVA glue with this stuff having been using these her start uh, pieces with plaster of different sorts for a number of years I did not really expect that to happen I must be honest so I have to glue that piece back on and uh, to reinforce it while I'm at it, I actually had a brilliant suggestion from one of my viewers during the live stream, and that's uh, that these didn't really look like ruins enough because it didn't have dirt on top of the, the pieces here to make it look like they were sunken in a little more. So I'm actually going to take some of my texture paste here and uh, use it in some of the corner here, but I'm gonna do it in a different way. I'm gonna take some of, I'm gonna take a cup here, take a bunch of my texture paste and add it in. Now I color my texture paste brown because I most often use it for ground cover. However, that's not necessary. do that you could keep it the plain color of the plaster and such I often end up painting my texture paste anyway over the top you don't have to do that either I've got some pieces of coffee stirrer here that I'm gonna break up and stick in this mixture and this mishmash to make it look like broken wood just a few pieces we don't need to go too too overboard but I'm making like a rubble paste and I've got these pieces of wall that I'm gonna break up in here. More her starts uh, castings. I'm gonna mix this up. Till we get something we want here. I need a little bit more of the wood. Now I'm going to take this wad of paste and kind of mush it around on my floor here. I'm not covering my whole floor. I don't want to lose that, the tiles, but I want to move this around and get it into the corner and make it look like a collapsed roof slash some kind of sunken area. Works for that. I'm gonna take a couple more pieces of wood here and kind of jam them in, stick them up out of the top. I got another piece of crumbled wall that I'm gonna jam in here. There, that's good. That'll work. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some of my dirt on there. give it a little bit more of that final texture which is really only something I've been doing lately is adding the dirt texture to the top I did add dirt to the paste itself but putting the dirt texture on top gives it a little bit more uh, I don't know oomph, I guess is the word I'm looking I'm using on that um, so now that's gonna sit and dry the bottom should be unwarped that needs to sit the rest of these pieces need to dry and when all that's done we'll start finishing the uh, the decoration of these pieces the next step in our process is to coat everything in the Mod Podge and black paint mixture to protect it if I were using dental stone on these ruins to do this uh, 
to do the casting rather than the her, her starts, uh, I'm sorry, rather than the plaster of Paris, I could skip this step for these because they would be a little bit more uh, solid, a little bit more rigid, a little bit more uh, tough. But since I have plaster of Paris, that's what I use. Whoops, my brush is too stiff. So I'm going to cover these in my Mod Podge and black paint mixture. In my constant quest to try to save time, I tried to paint these most of the way just using my spray paint. And it kind of worked, except for the brown kind of coming up on the, the stonework here. But I think a dry brushing with a lighter gray will solve most of that. So I'm going to, tr I'm trying to find a way to, I'm trying to find a way to make this quick, to make these kinds of things uh, happen without too much effort because I want to play the game and I want to have time to do other stuff. So um, I'm going to attempt to speed paint these. And that was why I used the spray paint instead of uh, painting them by hand. Granted, I did do the Mod Podge that took a little bit. If these were on MDF bases, I wouldn't have bothered with the Mod Podge. I would have skipped that step altogether. I wouldn't have been as worried about these uh, falling and breaking. So I'm going to go right to a gray, a light gray dry brush for the stonework, and I'm going to use a light tan for the dirt. This 
This color scheme kind of works for me anyway, these different colors than what I'm used to. Frostgrave takes place in a ruined, abandoned city covered in ice. And I'm thinking when I add some snow flock to this, it will help hide some of my crimes. Yeah, that's, that's working. I'm liking now this is coming out. It couldn't have come out better if I painted it slowly using other paints, I, I maybe? This definitely saved me some time on the base coat anyway. The next thing that I want to do is wash these ruins in some of my homemade black wash, which I actually haven't used in a while, so some of the ink and stuff settled on the bottom. So I'm going to try to stir it up a little bit without making it too sudsy, because I don't want to ruin the, uh, the way the surface tension works with this stuff. I don't know how much of this I'm going to need, but I'm just going to douse these ruins in black wash. The last thing I decided to do before moving on to the snow flock was to dull coat these prior to putting the snow flock on, uh, just in case um, some of the shine from the wash shows through because I used a, a matte medium doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be perfectly flat. So I decided to come in with a dull coat to kind of alleviate some of that. Uh, hopefully um, the gloss, uh, or sorry, the matte medium that I use and the wash that I use that's homemade tends to be more of a satin finish than a matte finish. So I just used some of my uh, testers um, dull coat lacquer which is my go-to spray lacquer from for this kind of thing uh, for models and miniatures in general and that will dull out all of the shiny goopy areas where the wash pooled um, and hopefully uh, everything will come together when we get some snow on these pieces all right so hopefully for the final step of this project I am going to mix up a paste of PVA glue and snow flock. I've got some Elmer's glue here, which I'm going to use because it's, it's cheaper and it flows a little better. I don't know how much I need, so I'm just going to put a bunch of glue in the bottom and then add uh, snow flock until I've got a consistency that I like. And I just bought this container of snow flock it's a woodland scenics uh, soft flake snow and i've never used this before so hopefully this won't be anything too uh egregious let's go with that and see what we got so i'm really liking how this is forming up here so i'm going to kind of not overdo it i'd rather underdo it than overdo it so i'm going to kind of leave that one alone
Thank you everybody for watching these videos. Uh, we've experienced uh, quite a good amount of growth over the last couple of months and I'd like to continue that trend. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you. And um, if you'd like to share something that you've made inspired by the channel, head on over to the Instagram page uh, or Twitter and use the hash hashtag the Dungeon Master uh, with your post and I'll see that and we'll be able to uh, you know show it off on the channel perhaps or something like that. I I'd love to see your creations if I've inspired you to create something. If if you'd like to help out the channel and help keeping these videos going, head on over to Patreon forward slash the Dungeon Master and consider becoming a subscriber for as little as a dollar a month. I use the pay what you can model. So whatever you'd like to contribute, it's up to you. I don't, I don't like using uh, tiers. Um, this was a fun build for me. I liked uh, using the snow flock. I liked use. I always love using my her starts uh, pieces, uh, the castings. I love working with those. They have very high detail and they're easy to use, and they uh, they take less time overall than building things with the foam bricks. Um, they work better for me in this case. Uh, they're not as versatile in some things as the foam bricks, but I like using them anyway. So um, if you liked this project, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below. See, you know, if you would have done anything, changed anything different. Next week, we're going to take a break from our uh, terrain board for uh, Frostgrave, and we're going to paint up a miniature, which I haven't done in a while. So that would be something different, that, you know, that we haven't done in a little bit that I like to do every once in a while to take a break from stuff so I don't get too burnt out. So we're going to paint a miniature next week and the week after we'll get back into uh, the Frostgrave terrain board. Hopefully I'll have my uh, rolling pins by then and we'll be able to continue with the big, uh, the big sections of board. Otherwise we'll make some more terrain, which I'm always down for. So um, I've been your friendly neighborhood dungeon master and as always, see you next time. Peace.